my name's Kevin Partner from makingyourowncandles.co.uk where you'll find the UK's biggest selection of candle making kits and materials. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a dinner candle, whether that's to be used as a plain dinner candle or alternatively to be used at Christmas as an advent candle. Uh, this is by far the easiest way to do it. There are other methods to do with uh, making taper candles, including multiple dipping and such like, but this mould produces fantastic results very easily and uh, it's pretty quick to use as well. So what will you need? Well, first you need one of these moulds. You need 80 grams of wax. We use um, a soy pillar blend in this particular um, recipe because it's self-coloured. It has a built-in dye, so you don't need to add any dye to it to get a nice creamy white candle. We need 35 centimetres of wick. We're using LX10. We need some plastic tape, a wick holder. Um, you can just use a pencil and put some blue tack on the side, but this is our patented lollipop stick with a hole on it, hole in it. Need a stirrer, some blue tack and a double boiler, or in other words, a method of melting the wax. Now there are lots of ways of doing that, <clears throat> but they all, all involve sitting the wax within a receptacle that itself sits in a bath of hot water. Um, we use often use a porringer set such as this one Where you have a smaller pan at the top that fits inside This is the sort of thing that you would, you would use for melting chocolate and basically anything that you would use for melting chocolate would work So something like this or a bain-marie similar um, similar apparatus will work fine or The simplest way of doing it is to Get a couple of cheap saucepans. You obviously can't use these for food afterwards, but cheapest saucepans you can get, one slightly larger than the other, sit the smaller one in the larger one, having put about a third of water into the larger one and put it on the heat. The wax goes into the smaller one and that prevents it ever getting too hot. So that's a perfectly safe way of doing it. We don't recommend, as some people do, that you should use a microwave because it'll potentially ruin your microwave. Okay, so I've got my wax, my double boiler, it's got hot water in it. I'm just gonna add the wax in, give it a quick stir. So we'll just put this on the heat now. That'll take about five minutes to melt. And then we'll be back for the next step. See you in a minute. Okay, while the wax is uh, finishing melting, we're going to set the mould up. So to do that, we need to take the mould apart, take the funnel off the top, and the cap from the bottom, and then slide these retaining tabs from the sides. And you'll find that the mould splits into two pieces, which makes getting it out much easier. There is another commonly available mould that is a single piece, but that is um, very difficult to use because it's very hard to release the candle from the mould once it's finished without breaking the tip off. So we'd much prefer this one. Okay, so I've got my mould laid out in front of me. So I'm going to run the wick along the length, obviously cut a bit much here. So it needs to go in, there's a, there's a hole for the wick to go through there. You need to make sure that it goes through that hole. Lay it like that. And then we just put the other mould on top. Again, just checking that the, the wick is free on the end there. Now we can reassemble it by moving the tabs to the centre and then pushing them up so they're nice and tight, about halfway up on each side. And 
And there we go. And what we need to do on the bottom is just seal that hole with a little bit of blue tack so that you get no spillage. Just a little bit on the hole there. There we go. So that's now completely sealed. And then for double safety, we're going to put this cap on the end like that. So that's the bottom end. That will be the top of the candle when it's finished. At the top, there's a handy little funnel, which will help with pouring it. It also keeps the top end closed. The two sides together nicely. There we go. Now then, we found that when we experimented with this particular mould that um, we did get some leakage from the seams. So what we recommend is to get some plastic tape and just seal it up by winding around the body. Make it nice and tight. And that will prevent any chance of any leaks. So one there, one in the middle, I'm actually going to put one around the bottom here as well just to be absolutely sure. So that's the completed mould now. It needs to be placed upright on a tray like this. Um, use a tray because if it does leak unintentionally, you do at least have some chance of catching the, um, the melted wax. That's now ready for the wax to be poured in. Wax is now melted you can see in the saucepan so we can just put the larger saucepan back okay so what I'm going to do now is very carefully pour we want to pour it to underneath where the funnel joins the body but only just so we pour in from the top See how far down that is. Yeah, it's nearly not too far off. And you'll find that you'll have a little bit left. That's because, as with all pillar blend waxes, the wax is designed to shrink, which is uh, on cooling, which is essential for making sure that you can release it from the mould at the end. That will also have the effect of causing it to dip at the top around where the wick is. So we're going to first of all secure the wick, keep it nice and straight by passing it through the wick stick. Take another piece of blue tack. And use the blue tack to secure it again nice and tight to the wick stick. So just double check that it's nice and central. Notice we've got no leaks. That's looking good. That can now be left to cool. Okay, we'll leave it to cool and then show you what the next step is. Okay, the candle has cooled. And that has meant that it's formed a dip, which I'm going to take the wick stick off. And you can see down there that you have a wick, that you have a dip around the wick. As I said, that's caused by the wax shrinking and is completely normal and necessary for removing it from the mould. But what we'll do now is I've just um, melted um, the remainder of the wax. And we'll just top it up 
Only takes a little. That's it. That now needs to be left for perhaps another half an hour or so for that top bit to solidify and they'll be ready to take it out. Right, the candle's now fully set and it's time to release it from the mould. First thing to do is just take the funnel off the end See that's filled the mould nicely. Cap off the other end. Take the blue tack off. Now just cut away the tape. Pull that off. could try using rubber bands. If you're going to be making a lot of these to save you using too much tape. Okay, now we take these tabs off. Now we can release the candle from the mould. Just need to find where the join is. And there you are. Sitting in the mould there. Should just pretty much drop out. There we go. Gorgeous dinner candle mould. You now just trim the wick top and bottom. And there's our dinner candle mould. Now then, if you want to decorate this with a water slide transfer, I'll show you how to do that. Very simple to use. If you've ever made Airfix models with decals then this will be very familiar. Just got a bowl of water there. Just going to put it in there for a few seconds. Just waiting for it to begin to feel as though it's loosening up. You want it to be nice and easy to slide off. And just feel it starting to move now. Just gonna leave it in there for a few more seconds. Okay, now the trick with this is to run it down the candle. So what I'm gonna do is just hold the top like so then pull the backing paper from underneath. And you can see it goes pretty much straight on. I've done it a little bit too high up, so I can just pull that down. It's fairly strong. And then it's just a case of wiping it down. piece of kitchen towel just to get the excess water off. This will also get rid of any wrinkles. And there we go. A little bit wonky. You can continue to adjust it 
until it has fully dried. As the candle burns down, the heat of the flame melts the nearest part of the water slide transfer. It doesn't set fire to it, it just melts it. So that, for example, if you're using it as an advent candle, um, you can easily track the days before Christmas. Okay, so that's how that's done. All of the parts for this kit are available from makingyourowncandles.co.uk, either in kit form or um, individually, if you prefer to buy them that way. So you can make either dinner candles or decorated advent candles. Thank you.